Welcome to the Disney Cruise Line blog podcast. On this episode, we're going to talk about our spring break cruise on the Disney Fantasy, a seven-night Western Caribbean out of Port Canaveral, with stops in Grand Cayman, Cozumel, and Falmouth, Jamaica, and Castaway Key. So, getting right into it, sailed out of Port Canaveral. Indeed we did. Normally, we're kind of early arrival people at the terminal. We kind of thought, what's the point of getting there early when we're just check in and sit around and have to wait? So this time around, we kind of took our time in the morning. I'd say we arrived at the port, dropped off our luggage and parked just before about 1130 in the morning. Uh, When we got there, they were kind of just, they had just done the family of the day, but by the time we checked in, uh, received our lanyards and everything, and they were on to boarding group six, I think. And we're aboard the Fantasy by 11.47 a.m. So from parking, dropping off, kind of leaving the car, and getting onto the ship was about 17 minutes. That includes security, checking in, and walking through the line. All in all, that's not bad considering... That is pretty good timing. I actually think I like that much better than... You know, get you know, getting there and then having to wait. But oh, definitely. But on to that, as you can see, boarding groups, you know, one through six were always already boarding. However, there's just a mass of people crowding the entrance to the boarding. And this even happens, you know, before they start boarding. My suggestion is they need to do something similar to what Run Disney does with the corrals. Because, you know, when you're doing a run Disney race, you're lined up through corral A through F and higher or whatever. There, there is people, there are people that are situated by the entrance that might be in boarding group 24. And really, there's no reason to crowd the entrance. It's just ridiculous. It, it's really bad. And I mean people just don't have the common sense to kind of go back. I know they're excited. It's so exciting. I'm excited to board the ship. We've done it a, a lot of times and it's still exciting to board the ship. However, I, I suggest that they do the port with like the corral order. Well, I think with the new renovation to Port Canaveral, at cruise terminal eight, and eventually what they'll do at cruise terminal 10 when they need three ships. I think we're going to see a more expedited check-in process where like Royal Caribbean does the facial recognition and you almost kind of just walk in the terminal and get on the ship. I think that's kind of where this is all heading, especially with the renovation plans that are reducing a lot of the check-in desks at Port Canaveral to where you kind of see that there's going to be a heavy heavy online check-in component where you just kind of show up and maybe just virtually check in or check in and, you know, go from there. I think all this will eventually kind of smooth itself out, but you know, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bottleneck trying to get on the ship. Uh, when you have boarding groups and double digits blocking the way right when they're, you know, having the family of the day after concierge go on the ship. So it's, we're all going the same place. Just at different times. Yeah. You got to wait your turn. So this was actually our first time back on the fantasy since it's dry dock enhance. It's first dry dock enhancements. So we we're eager to get on board and kind of, you know, we grabbed a quick lunch at Cabana's. And so we we're eager to kind of go around the ship and see the new stuff or what was new to us. After our quick lunch, we we're already in the area, so we went to Sweet on You first. The new, uh, you know, ice cream, gelato, candy, sweet shop, all around dessert shop, muffins, cupcakes, you name it, up on, uh, right outside Cabana's in the location of the old arcade. It's the same place that you'll find Vanellope's on the Disney Dream, that same little cutout area as you walk out the pool deck from Cabana's. It's definitely u- unique. It stands alone from Vanellope's. I think when you, comparing the two, I personally like Vanellope's, the overall theming done in there. I think that 
almost sweet on you as more of a, you know, let's just get the store in there and kind of throw up some wallpaper. And see, I actually like sweet on you. I don't want to speak for Isabel, but I thought it was cute. It was like a little cafe setting and it wasn't, um, there wasn't a lot of visual things to look at. So it was a lot of, I don't know. I thought it was cute. I didn't think it was shoehorned in. I don't know. Isabel, I didn't sweet say shoehorned you. in. I just said sweet on you or Vanellope's. Lazy decorating. Oh, that's that's a hard choice. Vanellope's has better, like, things to look at and more things to do. And There's Emily in the minority. There, and then, but sweet on you. I just think it's clean. Casually comforty. Is that even it's a cute. word? It's cute. It's like a little cafe. Yes. I can't choose. They're both cute. I don't favor one more than another. That took us out to the pool deck where we walked past the new water area. Splash. Not hot tub. Splash. Splash pad. Pool with like fountains. Yeah. That's about exactly how it should be explained. Splash pool with fountains. Very shallow water with two fountain things. Did you miss the hot tub, Isabel? Yes. I enjoy hot tub. Who doesn't enjoy a good hot tub? There's a truth to that statement. Anyhow. I think I mean, the uh, water splash area, it is integrated nicely in the deck. Unless you really knew what it looked like before, it doesn't really stick out as being added on after the fact. Kind of like Satellite Falls on the Dream. Looks you know, add it on. This looks more well integrated into the decking and current design where it doesn't look out of place or an afterthought. After we checked out, you know, the new water feature on the pool deck, uh, I was getting around that time to, for the staterooms to open up. So we were able to go and drop off our luggage. Uh, and then it was time for the open house at the Oceaneer Club. It was time to see Marvel Superhero Academy with uh, kind of the Doctor Strange sanctum with the books on the wall and the artifacts. The art, you know, Avengers like artifacts. The doors that you can turn, though, there were the broken ones, yes. Just had to note that. Yeah, it looks really cool inside. I don't know. It would, it would almost make for like for a really cool library on the ship. You know, like other cruise lines have libraries. Only if it came with Wong. Yeah. But it's it's really nicely decorated. It looks like a you know, nice little office mm-hmm. library kind of sitting area that would be enjoyable. Did you do many activities in there? I did something with Doctor Strange, and I also got the ID card. Well, what's the ID? What's the ID card like on the fantasy? It's a lanyard card instead of a just the like your stateroom key card. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's changed on the other ships, but and it's a lanyard, and it's an up and Portrait design instead of a landscape design. Okay. Like an ID for an office or something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, around around there's, you know, some memorabilia, some Avengers memorabilia, or not memorabilia, but collectibles that have nods to the various films. The other uh, new area on the Disney fantasy is the, was the Star Wars command post, which uh, it was different from the uh, Millennium Falcon that's over on the Disney Dream. Mm-hmm. But uh, this was more of a, you know, it's Command Outpost. So it's definitely, a, it's got the same kind of overall feel as the Millennium Falcon, but it's a little, it's a lot different setup. And there's more opportunities for kids to sit down and do some flight simulators. Yes, there are the uh, there's only two, and they each have one seat, so it's the same as the Millennium Falcon, but you're in your own instead of doing... So it's the same else. video from Star Tours? No, I don't think so. 
Okay. Is I only got to do it once, so I'm so not for sure. Over on the, mo- the Millennium Falcon on the Dream. It's the same Star it's Tours. essentially yeah. what you'd see on Star Tours. And you're not really manning the oh. ship. But, or, or is this one you're actually controlling the flight simulator? I think it's another you're not controlling it, but I only got to do it once, so... There's a lot of interactive stuff, I noticed. There was a lot of buttons you could push on the wall and switches you can flick. And then there was that where you could view the ships and stuff. The spaceships. So out of of the two Star Wars spaces on the Dream and Fantasy, which one do you prefer? Probably the Fantasy. All right. Interesting. I thought the Falcon would be the number one. Well, the Falcon's pretty cool, but I like that area where you can look at the ships and stuff. Oh, yeah, one of the other interactive the spots. Spaceships. Okay. What about the, uh, what about the Marvel spaces? Ooh, that, the fantasies. Yeah. Between yeah. the magic and the wonder? Yeah, because, oh. Yeah, all three of them. Well, the magic and the wonder, those are just generic shield area. Mm-hmm. That one has more of a theming, which I think is cooler. All right. Fair. Heard it here first. Yeah, of in terms of theming, the space on the fantasy is pretty spectacular. I agree, and I mean, those of you that are listeners and readers of the the blog and the podcast know that we're huge Marvel fans. And even though, you know, globally, Doctor Strange wasn't rated the highest, we really liked that movie, and so it to be themed like that was really neat. So we thought it was very cool. As the day moved on, it was about time to uh, hit up the muster drill, sail away party, and then it was kind of off and running for the evening to dinner, dinner at Animator's Palette. First night started off amazing. Food was pretty good. Service was beyond excellent. Couldn't ask for a better uh, first evening dinner. We hit, then headed over to, you know, the shops to kind of browse and see what's going on. As the Sanders do, shops every day. This is when we uh, first ran into the reusable shopping bags, which they come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. They're $1 regardless of size. There's a unique design on the ships, and there's also a unique design on Castaway Key. They do not have any plastic bags available, so if you purchase something and choose not to buy a reusable bag, you just carry the item out of the store. With your receipt in hand. But they know what they're doing because the bags were set up as merchandise as well in the store. They weren't just kind of behind the counter. They were presented on shell, you know, on racks. As we did our browsing around, we kind of got our first glimpse of Tiffany and Company and the, I don't know how to say this place, Bulgardi. Bulgardi. Our cruise was a little bit interesting because it was during the time when Aladdin was dark in ter- as it was going for its reimagination before it came back in conjunction with the live action movie. So Aladdin's back on as a, one of the three shows right now, but during our cruise, it was not. So we had a little extra dose of variety acts on this cruise, which is nice. Cause we actually prefer the, we actually really enjoy going to the variety acts on our sailings. So the first night it was a ventriloquist, which is always entertaining. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Love it. Love that the variety acts are in the Walt Disney Theater as well. Yeah. And not little, shoved in a bar area. Yeah, it was nice that that little test they did last summer was not well received, and they kind of went back to having the variety acts in the theater instead of, you know, the, like, tube or... D-Lounge. Yeah random venues around the ship that always were always packed and you know sight lines to the stage weren't always the best it's nice to have those back in the theater then we turned to our stateroom and that was kind of this was at the peak of when the personal navigators were almost non-existent in terms of their in their paper form uh not going to go on about this, but 
during on this during this cruise, you had to go down to guest services and almost beg for one. Uh, but the lady started to recognize me and just knew what I wanted yeah. uh, throughout the cruise. So it's calmed down a bit. They're much easier. You can now just go up and grab one from guest services instead of having to ask for one. Obviously, this our experience was at the uh, beginning of this little test they were running to try and force people to use solely the app and to get rid of paper altogether. But I only bring this up because that was the night we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of paper left on our, in our room that I think that set you over the edge. Yeah, You started collecting them at that point. Adventures by Disney DVC onboard rebooking form shopping, port shopping another port shopping an invitation to something Port shopping related. It was please it, come to our DVC reception and buy points. It was basically you got every single piece of paper from a cost center that wasn't Disney Cruise Line related. So, so di- true. it didn't come out of their paper reduction and environmental budget. So it's less overhead tax. Yeah, that gets confusing unless you listen to the Disney dish with Len Testa and Jim Hill when they read this whole thing. It's a good podcast to listen to about a lot of the environmental changes that are happening all across Disney. It, it's a little eye-opening on changes that have been made, but I'll link to that episode here in the show notes. But it, it kind of makes sense once you kind of start seeing these things. You know, all these changes where they say it's for the environment, which in the same hand, while true and good for them, it's also a cost reducing thing, but they also don't want to talk about it because inevitably it's costing more money to do it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going in circle. Just listen to the podcast. It's interesting. Right. I mean, you could do a whole separate post on the navigator situation, but you know, paper straws and so on. That stuff is great. Like it's fine. I mean, I always laugh when I am served a drink that has a straw in it, especially like a margarita where they rid the glass, but you know, yeah, the, you're right. It, we'll, we'll table that discussion for another. For it, another. It's it's had its day in the spotlight. It's what's done is done, and we're all moving on. Anyway, that was pretty much day one. Day two was our first kind of full day on the cruise. We spent it at sea, sailing towards Mexico. The morning was, you know, it wasn't very warm. At least for us, wasn't you know a pool day, if you will. Well, the ship is never really warm. Emily and I booked brunch at Palo. We had a good, uh, overall, a good brunch, solid brunch. Yeah, I, I will tell you the one thing that stuck out at me at brunch was I enjoy when the server recognizes that you're a repeat guest and you don't have to kind of go through all that pomp and circumstance, and then neither do they. So they don't have to go through, well, here's X, Y, and Z on the, you know, because they know that you've done it several times. So I think it makes their job easier and it makes our experience better. And yeah, it's fine. I like the Magic and Wonders setup better because you're in the main room versus you're not in that back room. But that's, I mean, it's a, it's the platinum benefit. It doesn't cost anything but the gratuity. So it's fine. It also helps when the server just offers the grape and gorgonzola pizza to you. Out right. of the blue. It's a personal favorite of ours. Right. Spoiler alert, it's still available because they have gorgonzola and grapes available to put on top of the pizza. It always has been available, even though they took it off the menu, but, you know. Every once in a while when I talk about it, people mention it's, well, it's not on the menu. Yeah, true, but... They'll still make it. Anyway, after uh, after our brunch, it was... This was also St. Patrick's Day. I forgot to add. So, it was, I think, the beginning of a day of crafts. St. Yeah. Patrick's Day crafts with Isabel. We had the show. so much fun. Crafts. What, what a great day. First one was 3D paper crafts where we made a... Mickey is a leprechaun, lean on a pot of gold. Oh, 
also magnet. That oh, looks nice. like a group of crafts. That one. Oh, the, it, oh the, there were door hangers? I mean, people laugh and say, oh, Disney Cruise Line, you know, it's trivia crafts. But, you know, that was a gr- we had a great day. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, trivia is always big. Crafts are big. What's the cruise line that has a sponsorship with Michaels for like craft? Carnival. Carnival. For, yeah. It's super fun. I so mean. It's definitely a draw. So, you know, even across the different cruise lines. So, yeah, we had fun. We really did. The The door hangers, I mean, the guy that was running the crafts kept coming around and it, like trying to interview Isabel because her door hangers were so neat. Then when we were in O'Gills and we got the, everything was dyed green. Remember that, Scott? How they had the, the dropper that they were dyeing beers and drink. Oh, well, yeah, I mean. Everything was green. The, <laughs> the beer. I mean, if you wanted anything green, they you would make it green. green. He literally had a large... Uh, coca-cola cup filled with this green dye which if that would have spilled anywhere <laughs> would have been permanent on any surface but we had a good, i mean it was it was a very very good time i i enjoyed my saint patrick's day on the ship it was great i agree well that was a saint patrick's day in a nutshell it was Apollo brunch crafts it was also formal night though because it's the first sea day right so we did a formal night before more trivia. I mean, it pretty much, if we're on board, you can find us at most of the trivia. <laughs> because we find them to be fun. Unless so are super late at night. Right. But I mean, Isabel, the music trivia, we have so much fun at. Yeah. So, we knew that the next day was a Cozumel, but we had chosen that this was going to be our sea day. Cozumel will be our sea day. Yeah, because we've been to Cozumel a, a lot of times. It's probably one of the ports that we've been to a lot of times, and we just wanted another day to kind of relax on board because that's one of the things we love about the Eastern, get the extra sea day. So we just decided to... We don't have anything against Cozumel. We're not in the group that feels unsafe. We have found plenty of very fun things to do. We talked about maybe going ashore for tacos. Um, so don't let us not going ashore deter you from going ashore. There are a lot of fun things to do in Cozumel. Disney excursions, resorts, walking around. You we know. had fun with the Fury Catamaran Port Adventure last we March. Did. You've had, fu- you've gone to, you know, get Wi-Fi at a bar and eat tacos. I mean, we've all, d- we've done a lot of things, but this time we said, okay, we're going to pick a port to do a sea day. We've never been to Jamaica. Isabel's birthday was on Grand Cayman. We gave her the choice. Did you want to do something in Grand Cayman? Did you want to do something in Cozumel? So we all kind of as a family decided that this was going to be our chill day. And it was great because people go ashore. It's not like NASA anymore where everyone stays on board. Yeah, it was it was a nice, relaxing quasi sea day as Sunday was craft day and craft and trivia day. Monday turned into movie day, starting with Ratatouille, then The Descendants. I don't know. What else do we watch? Bugs Life. Maybe Dumbo was on there. Lost track. We're able to ride the Aqua Dunk. Or, yeah, Aqua Dunk. I wonder. Right? The Aqua Duck a few times. Yeah, we had fun. I mean, we we really had it rained a little bit, but it was just rain. There was no storm, so it didn't close the pools down or anything, which is nice. It's interesting. I find that, you know, Isabel's 12 now. And Scott, don't you find it interesting that we actually find it to be, we enjoy hanging out in the family area more than the secluded adult area? When we went up to Satellite Falls, there was, what, one guy maybe? Maybe mm-hmm. two people? It was empty dead. But I'd rather sit and watch a movie on Funnel Vision than... Well, it didn't help that Satellite Falls was cold. The water was cold. Right. Right. Well, that, that doesn't entice me to hang out. Before I forget, we, we did some more trivia before dinner. And our cruise host was Chris. <laughs> he was a great cruise host. He was amazing. He would... He had fun. He enjoyed trivia. He enjoyed doing the trivia. He, you know, was another one of the crew members that g- generally had was having a good time doing what he was doing. 
he he definitely enjoyed his job. He definitely enjoyed his job. We had a, he he was good. Speaking of people that were great, our servant team of Mario and Cindy, they were fantastic. They goes back, I would say, once when you can kind of figure out a server's leading you in a direction on what to order and you give them a chance and they're right, stick with that because they were spot on on what to order and what not to order during this cruise. So we had a great time, you know, overall great meals every night going off their suggestions on what to, you know, stick, stay away from based on how it was coming out of the kitchen. Because in fact, Isabel even tried ordering one of her favorites, but he was like, eh, it's, it's not a good one right now. And sure enough, it came out and she was, he was like, let me, he goes, order a backup. <laughs> and sure enough, she went with the backup. Yes, I did. Again, more trivia. And then we went to go see Nick Paul. And went another one of the variety acts. It was a magical comedy. I, I find it interesting that we don't go to the Broadway, sh- like Disney shows anymore, but we go to the Variety Act. I would have gone to Aladdin if it was the new one. No, I, yeah, I would have gone to Aladdin too. I would have gone to Aladdin if it was the old one because I like that one. I like Tangled. I mean. Should've, I should have went to go see Wishes. Hey, Disney, we like matinees. They they were doing matinees of the new Aladdin recently. Anywho, so that was our quasi sea day spent doing watching movies at the pool, trivia, more trivia, hanging out, chilling, relaxing. I can't believe we didn't do crafts. Just saying. Were there crafts? Oh, the other thing too is that I don't know if we did it on this day, but the cool thing about O'Gills and 687 are that they've got the board games out, which is something that we also enjoy. So Isabel is so cool to just, yeah, let's go and grab categories or let's go. So we, we do do some of that as well in between the trivia and because it's fun. It's fun to just go down there and do that stuff. At some point, Disney changed the pillows in the stateroom. Probably around the same time they changed the pillowcases and... All and, that the, and the linens. Yeah. And anyway, I used to sleep like a baby on a cruise. I had the worst sleep on this cruise. And these pillows were very uncomfortable to the point I'd consider bringing my own pillow again. That's a stretch, but I might. Definitely makes me want to call and ask for a pillow menu. Yeah, it's it was... I was waking up with a sore neck every morning. It was pretty bad where I was just unable to sleep and I'd wake up ridiculously early and just kind of start the day earlier than I wanted. But anyway, mini rant about pillows. Let me know. (laughs) I'm the only one that has that problem. But it's So what time did we get to Grand Cayman? It was a little later, later arrival. Yeah, all the like sure was 1030. 10.30. So I think I ran that day. Yeah. And. Isabel and I tried to do shuffleboard, I think. Yes, we did. Runners love when you're playing shuffleboard, too. Oh, yes, they do. Just as much as the runners love glacier watching in Alaska. <laughs> so, but. I don't know what time since we weren't doing a Disney cruise line port adventure in Grand Cayman. In fact, we had something set up for later in the day and with all ashore 1030 having to tender ashore, not being in a Disney cruise line port adventure. We weren't, we didn't have like priority, uh, priority to the tender. So we just had to queue up in the, uh, Walt Disney theater. Thank you. So the last time we went to Grand Cayman, we just we just went to Margaritaville, mm-hmm. I think. The time before that, we had a Disney excursion. Right. So we had 
we're kind of familiar with the tendering ticket process, but we were trying to be one of the first tenders off so we could enjoy time before our excursion. And of note, this was Isabel's 12th birthday. So we asked Isabel what she wanted to do. And she likes Margaritaville. Their and pool for th- and slide right, for are those amazing. Of you, for those of you that are like, you know, oh, she likes a bar. Tell them why again, Isabel. What's a fun? A pool and a slide and a cold hot tub, but there's still a hot tub. And there's and you like the food. Oh, the food is great. Right. It's family friendly during the day. It's extremely oh, yeah. family friendly. And even when it, even when the kind of inside dance area got a little unfamily friendly, the DJ kind of quashed it down. So they they do a good job at maintaining, you know, they read the room and kind of see who's around and keep it in order. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. And this time that we went there was the busiest time that we've been there. I think there was two or three carnival ships. Um, import plus us plus maybe something else. But anyway, Scott, go back to the tendering process because people that have never been to Grand Cayman and don't have an excursion booked might want to know how that all works. So I don't know which time it said to kind of, they'd start queuing up in the Walt Disney theater, but we had eaten breakfast. We didn't have anything to do. So we just went down there at 10 o'clock to get in line. Uh, you know, to get our place. Once you get in, they seat you in rows in the Walt Disney Theater. They give you a little tendering ticket, which seems unnecessary, but it's a piece of paper they hand out, given they're trying to get rid of paper. And you sit down and you can just kind of wait, and they eventually will take you off in groups, like as many that will fit on a tender. When there's an, when there's one available, not, you know, and they're not trying to get off a specific port of entry group. I tell you, we got there... We got to the theater around 10, and I don't even think we waited 15 minutes to get to the tender. I mean, no. they were, so they even had they even had us going ashore before 10:30 that day, or right at 10:30 we probably hit land. And yeah, first thing we did is went over to Margaritaville, played in the pool, had lunch. Well, actually, remember. Oh, we did a drive-by. We kind of, we did the how long will it take from Captain Marvin's to Margaritaville so we knew how much time we had to, and what was it, three minutes? Yeah, it was. Legitimately three minutes. Because after, because we were doing Margaritaville in the morning, and then we had a, our private tour booked with Captain Marvin's, which is a pretty common tour outfit that a lot of people, you go Google things to do in, Grand Cayman, that's what a lot of people, that's one of the, I don't know, what was the one I'm looking for? Popular uh, vendors in the area. And so we had an afternoon excursion with them. And so we knew, they kind of told us we had to meet at their office, be here at this time. So then well, we just, said. Just a little note, though. Um, when going to book this online with Captain Marvin's, they ask you, you know, what time your ship um is arriving your uh, all ashore time is and they kind of suggest your excursion time so all our all ashore time was 10 30 and i believe they had an 11 30 tour but they recommended to us the 130 or 145 tour which originally i was kind of bummed about because you were you was till like 4 or 4 30 and then all aboard was 5 30 but actually it worked out perfectly because of being able to go to Margaritaville and have and have yeah. lunch first, which is what Isabel wanted to do, versus the reverse. If we would have done the excursion in Captain Marvin's first, we probably wouldn't have gotten any food or anything mm-hmm. um, because we would have or was, just gotten on the ship. That was probably also they were probably also balancing out the other ship. Like you said, the Carnival ship was le- at all aboard at two, so they may have wanted to balance, you know, demand for each ship that was in there. And kind of put them in because our tour wasn't we had a mix of people from the fantasy people just that were staying on Grand Cayman and then did you find anybody from any other cruise ships or was it just where honey on our tour uh uh, the the catamaran that we were on Mm -hmm. or the boat for Cat Marvin's right there was a group from Carnival Okay. The, the people in front of us. All right. They were cool. They were great. And uh, so, yeah, we, we met 
at Captain Marvin's office, a little office kind of at a corner building, literally three minute walk from Margaritaville. So about a 90 second walk from the terminal entrance, give or take. There's a whole, we have a whole write up on it that I'll link to port of entry review on this. that I'll link to in the show notes that, uh, goes into detail, talks more about the booking process, the payment, you know, how we paid, you know, if your ship, if by some reason you're unable to tender that day, there's no, you know, you're not being charged for it. Uh, if you're late and then they'll work with you to kind of move to a different time or they'll shift the time accordingly. So they, they are pretty flexible and are willing to work with you in most cases. So you, you do a credit card reserve, but you don't actually pay until you get to the office. But the Grand Cayman is a great port. It's gorgeous. It's it's a great port. The beaches are clean. Like, it's just gorgeous. It's a... The crossing guard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was fantastic. And He's that, having fun with his job. It's the dancing policeman who... Probably gets a great workout every day directing traffic. So back to the Captain Marvins, you know, we did uh, the Stingray City and Snorkel Tour. And, and the they snorkel. have been doing this for a long time. So mm-hmm. they are very well versed in this whole experience. Yeah, they, you get, you go to their office, they pick you up in a, they pick, they take the group that's going out. You uh, load up into a van. They take you over to the their little marina, kind of like, quasi-residential area in a canal. They, You board the boat and you go out. Our first stop that day was a little snorkeling area where we could still see the ship in the distance, which is always reassuring. It was a good snorkeling early. Yeah, they were chumming mm-hmm. the water too so that the fish were coming, but mm-hmm. but it was, a, it was a fine snorkeling area. Once you get away from all the other people and people that have never snorkeled before, you had some good fish and coral and stuff. I mean, yeah, it was pretty. We, we, there was some rain moving in, so we didn't know what to kind of expect going forward. But the highlight or the main reason for this tour is the sandbar, the Stingray City sandbar, where you go out. It's just kind of out in the open. You get out, nice little sandbar you can walk on. It's only about maybe two feet deep, three, no. I know, given tides, anywhere from like three to four feet deep water. Yeah. And you kind of just stand there and the guides kind of gather you all in a circle. Actually, when you're coming up, when you're sailing towards this area, you can just see a mass of boats and people in the middle of the water. You're like, and that's, it's not hard to find the sandbar if you're looking for it and you don't know where you're going. Just look for the people in the circle of boats. Once you get out there, everybody gets in the water who's... Not who's comfortable getting in the water. Then the guides kind of bring up one of the stingrays and they kind of talk about the stingrays, give you a little background, kind of show you how to properly touch a stingray. Right. And then there's an opportunity to feed a stingray. I likened the experience to cats rubbing up against your leg. Exactly. When they want food. They kind of do that little drive-by where they rub up against your shin and, you know, keep going. And that's kind of what the rays were doing. They'd it's almost circle. like they try to scent you up like a cat. Like, mm-hmm. it's great. It's really great. Yeah. And I, Except for the people screaming that are like, oh, my God. I, I can understand where people... I, I was... I had an irrational fear of rays as a kid. Well, that's why we waited until Isabel was a little bit older. Mm-hmm. And we didn't take her when she was five because so taking me as a kid would have traumatized me even more. However, but Izzy loved it. I worked through that and right, Izzy. I don't want to speak for you. Yes, I did. You would like to go back? Yes, I would. Did you have any hesitations or no, not nervousness? Really. I mean, the first time I rubbed it, my, your against my leg, I was kind of like, "What was that?" All right. But then I was like, oh, it's just this thing, right? It's fine. And it, keep in mind, th- there are visitors there prob- daily. So these rays are accustomed to people, boats, you know, 
it's almost like a glorified petting zoo for the rays. So it's, they're definitely used to human interaction. So all in all, it was a pretty awesome experience. I definitely go back and hang out with the rays. And I'd even can, I have no qualms about looking at Captain Marvin's for a future tour for that or something else. They were pretty solid outfit. We, uh, all aboard was 5.30. We returned to the terminal about 4.30. And so it's pretty much, we don't want to do any shopping. So we just went back, got on the next tender, went back to the ship. I'd say, keep in mind, when you're going tendering, you got to at least think it's about 15 minutes from, you know, the tender, you know, once you get on the tender to the shore and vice or, you know, heading back. It's, so it's, it's not the quickest process. So just when you're planning things, you got to add in that time. But for those of you that get super concerned and super worried about not booking the Disney excursion, the ship is not going to leave without you. Once you're on the tender, <laughs> you're not going to pull away with the tender there. So, <laughs> Don't worry about it. All aboard was 5.30. We got on about 4.20 and we're back at 4.30 or something like that. We still would have had plenty of time. You you have time. It's it's okay. You're, the ship is not going to leave you. You're, <laughs> you're, if you're on the tender. I know that's a question we get all the time. How can you think about booking third party very easily? Third party doesn't want you to be left either because you're yeah. going to give them a negative review. Right. They're... They work off reviews, whether it be TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor is a big review system that they go off on. And they don't want to be known as the tour operator that, you know, their clients got their ship left them because they didn't get them back. So they're very in tune to what's going on and they don't want you to be late. And we've encountered this, I'll say it, all over the world. We, You know, the ones in Europe last summer, yep. the Med, they were focused and they were, you know, concerned about making sure we're back there. Well, well before all aboard time, because they don't want to have to, you know, they don't want their reputation ruined or tarnished because, you know, their group left. Correct. So we're back on the ship. And this is something and when I talked about earlier and she had set up earlier in the cruise. Sweet on you. And the same thing can you can do at Vanellope's on the dream. You can go in and order something and have it delivered to the stateroom or uh, to your dining room for dessert. But since this was Isabel's birthday, Emily went in and ordered a uh, kind of a Mickey cupcake, a happy birthday Mickey cupcake that they had. And she arranged to have it delivered so it would be in our stateroom when we returned. And so that was, you know, it's and it just costs what the item costs. There's no, like, service charges for delivering to your room or anything. They just, something pretty cool that, yeah. It was pretty tasty. Nice little surprise to have. Dinner that night was an animator's palette, which is always fun to draw on your napkin or your placemat. Some of us like it more than others. I like it. It was nice. This was our also first time experiencing the animation magic dinner with the uh, full menu instead of the pre-plated appetizers and soups where you actually get to order from, you know, each, and you actually get to a selection for each course. And even with, you know, that new sel- selection process, the show and everything still flowed well. It didn't, I don't know, I didn't see it causing any issues. So it was kind of nice to have full selection of menu instead of, here, here's your uh, trio sampler appetizer, and here's your soup, and then what do you want for dinner and dessert? The trio that you can't eat because there's usually shrimp on it, so it's shellfish yeah, laden. So after dinner, you know, after a couple days of not doing anything, and then a day ashore kind of out in the water, out in the sun, having fun, we just weren't feeling it. the show, which was uh, Disney on Broadway star set sail, Josh Strickland, who... Uh, played Tarzan on Broadway. We've been to previous stars on Broadway. They're good. They're great. We just, nothing against Josh. We just weren't feeling it that night. 
Isabel had wanted to go participate in Doctor Strange Defy the Dark Dimension, but she quickly returned and said it didn't happen as scheduled. Schedule changed. No, nope, it just didn't happen. No, oh, it didn't happen at all? No. I was there and I kept walking by and nothing was occurring. I was confused. Yet it was still on the app and the, the app. Can we please not talk about the app? I know, but if you're pushing the app and it's still on the app, which is supposed to be the most accurate thing. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Yeah. So fuck off. That's for another podcast. I, I so we were about. going to, we were very excited because we were going to a Newport the next day. Jamaica. They have a bobsled team. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those, we stopped kind of really booking Western Caribbean cruises right when Disney Cruise Line added. They switched from Costa Maya to yeah. Jamaica. Well, yeah. it was just when spring break yeah, was. That, and that didn't help either. And we can, but we stopped doing Westerns at that time and we kind of fell in love with the Easterns, which coincidentally worked well with our spring break calendar. So it's a combination of those things. We just were not going on Western Caribbean cruises. So this just happened to be the first time we were able to get to Jamaica since it became an option with Disney Cruise Line. And the port itself is shared pretty much shared with Royal Caribbean. So the Oasis of the Seas towered over everything. The port is very nice. It's it was glorified. Very nice. It's a glorified mall, but I mean, it's very well done. It's got, how different is it from every other port we've been to with the Del Sol, the bamboo shop, the, I mean, seriously, it's fine. Right. It's totally it's just, safe. There's people selling their wares. Like, but the thing with, there's food. The thing with FOMO, I'm, unlike other ports is there's nothing to do unless you do a port adventure and or shot like you cannot just go walk and explore i you mean you can go to margaritaville but i'm saying which also has a pool but i'm not you can't walk into like the city center or venture like you go to grand cayman you can walk to the beach right there right or you know even in st thomas you can walk from heaven site over to the, you can walk to town or, you know, here you have to do something. You know, there's nothing right there. It's not like you're in Ochos Rios where the other cruise port is. We can just walk into the little city center. This is, this is off on its own. I mean, it was. I think that's why some people, you know, if they're picking a seat, they might choose to make it too, because Mm -hmm. if you're not doing something, I'm, I would have no problem booking a third party excursion in Jamaica either. Oh, and I'm I'm not saying this negatively about the, port i'm just bringing that to your, yeah. just pointing that out that you know or we've often been to ports where you look at the map and you're like oh we can go walk and do all this stuff it's great this is not one of those you have you have to plan something ahead or just be okay walking around the shopping area and hanging out at margaritaville or something right or, i don't know. i didn't, wasn't really paying attention do they have taxi stands there did you notice yeah it was down by where we picked it. up our bus okay mm-hmm. i was so, what do you do when you go to Jamaica? You get a bobsled or ride a bobsled. Right. You do the most cliche thing. You book the Port of Venture where you can go on a bobsled, which is actually pretty awesome. We'll get to that in a moment. But okay, but again, hold on, Scott. For those of you that follow the blog, you know how we typically do vacations. Here's where we're going. Isabel, what do you want to do? Scott, what do you want to do? Emily, what do you want to do? And this time, we asked Isabel in all of the ports, what do you want to do? In Jamaica, she was very specific. I want to do a bobsled. Bobsled. Now, she also got to pick in Grand Cayman because it was her birthday. But we usually do in all of our cruises, what do you guys want to do? And (laughs) being that... She wanted to do the bobsled. I wanted to do um, Duns River Falls. And having a Disney excursion that married both of them was perfect. And Scott, bless your heart, you, you didn't care anyway. You were like, whatever, I'm fine. I like to snorkel. I'm still happy I got to make pizza in Naples. 
Right. So, but I mean, that's how, that's how we do stuff. And so I booked this one, um, so that we could, you know, we typically will do one, maybe Disney excursion, you know, and this one was just easy and the timing was good, et cetera. So we're going to talk about it. It's bobsled Jamaica in Dunn's river falls. It's port adventure F a 10. We'll have a port adventure review up on this as well. I'm actually still writing it. I haven't edited the videos, but I promise it'll be up. You can click on it. Read it. It'll be fun. But just overall, as far as ex- Disney excursions go, so far, one of my favorites was one we did back on our Southern and Barbados. This one is really good. I, I thought that this was a, a good value, a very good port excursion. Yeah, Isabel, what do you think? I agree with you. Scott? That seemed robotic, but it was genuine. I mean... Yeah, it was. we had a lot of fun. I, the, the one thing I warn, I'd warn anybody about on this one is it's an hour... It's bookended by an hour ride in the van because you have to go to... Or an hour air-conditioned bus. Yeah, but you have to go to Ocho's Rios. Ocho Rios? Yeah. Is where the... Uh, the Mystic Mountain is where the bob- bobsled is and Duns River Falls are kind of like, they're for like five minute drive away from each other practically. So you do have to drive over there. So, you know, keep in mind, use the facilities on the ship before you leave as a port adventure and then probably bring something to do. Well, bring our snack. tour guide was great though mm-hmm. at engaging us on the bus. And I mean, we happened to know another family that was traveling with us. Um, so that was kind of cool to talk to them and, and kind of hang out with them. And, um, but this, this was a good excursion. So just kind of diving in. Yeah. It's an hour drive to get there. It's scenic though. They talk to you. The tour guide was like telling us about all these things. Like we were passing by fruit and she was telling us about it. Yep. And how they prepare it and all that good stuff. It was really neat. Um, she also was preparing us for how cold the falls were going to be. And this is like a very popular, this is a very touristy destination in Jamaica, Duns River Falls. Like this is something that. It was in Dr. No. Yeah. This is super, this is super popular, but, um, climbing the falls is, was really cold, but you have to, you're holding hands. So you're kind of going up like a chain. Is that how you would? Yeah. I call it a chain. Like. You, they did it where it's like hands across America. They had, <laughs> they, they w- made sure that our guide made sure that their the kids were sandwiched between adults, so we worked so no two kids were together because they want you to hold hands with the person bef- in front of you and the person behind you as you go step by step. So it's not the thing that wasn't very that I didn't know about going into this. Is that it's not a free for all, like go at it, you know, like for the three of us, we just wouldn't, you know, go up as a family. It's you, your entire group is hand to hand and you're walking, you're following a path. You have to communicate, you need to communicate with the person in front of you and behind you to say, Hey, there's a hole right here. Step here or be careful. This is a pretty, you know, steep drop down in the water and things like that because, you know, the water's rushing I mean, it, don't. This isn't that strenuous of an activity, or you know, dangerous or anything. But you just no. have to be careful. You have to do not drink a single drop yeah. of any sort of alcoholic beverage. Grant, this was like at eight a.m. or something crazy. But this is not one you that need you to be pre-game. on your game, on point. You are also responsible for other people's children if you're holding their hands. Right, Emily and I both had. Isabella to take care of, but we also had two other kids that were not ours that we were responsible for. You, you need to responsible. be sharp. Yeah. You need like they'll tell you that there's a hole here. You could you could twist an ankle easily, so easily. Falling is not a huge deal because you're in the water and, and the rocks so, are really it was soft. So cold, so your body's already kind of and not, the rocks yeah. aren't soft, but they're smooth. They're smooth. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you need to be sharp and on your game. And it's very, very, very fun. It's not something that I probably need to do again for another maybe five years. I had a good time. I really enjoyed it, but you 
you're very focused. You're you know, very... It's like the ultimate team building exercise <laughs> that an office would go book. Like, I could see Michael Scott trying to pull. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you, you really have to work together with people that you've just met. And, you know, it's... It was neat. It was fun. You got to, like, do backwards dives and... Yeah, there were some areas where you could have some fun. There was like a, a slide a slide in the rocks. There was a place where they wanted you to dive backwards that I was still terrified of doing because I don't want to hit my head on anything. But you did it anyway because that's what they told you to do. I, and I'm so. actually glad that that was first. Yeah. they. You know, we took a waterproof camera and a GoPro with us, but it's virtually impossible like, take photos because you're holding hands the whole time. Right. Uh, there is a videographer that's you. When you get there, your group is assigned a guide and a videographer. The videographer shoots video the entire of your entire group who then towards the end. And there are a couple spots you stop and take like individual group, individual photos. But then there's, then at the end he kind of scoots off and he goes back because they'll sell you the DVD of your group video which is the same video for the entire group. So if you really only one person needs to buy the video, you can all just pass it around your group. But they also sell like, you know, actual photographs at the end. The guides are invaluable though, because they know where like those points are where you. And this isn't our guide from the van. This is the guide from the falls. Who They're wearing like the dry fit shirt and, and the, and you have to wear um, shoes that cover your heels and your toes. And we all had Keens um, that we purchased. Uh, however, were they Keens? Yeah. Yes. I will tell you, though, that water shoes actually might be a better choice because don't get the rocks, the rocks go in the little pebbles. to the Keens. So, so if you're looking for water shoes, which are required to do this. And you can buy them there. They're 10 bucks. Yeah, they're just kind of like black slip on water shoes with I think a Jamaican flag on right, it. Right. Right. And you keep those. They're yours to keep, but you are required to wear shoes. And if you are bringing your own and you're buying something specifically for this, find stuff that doesn't have like large holes in the side, because once a pebble gets in there, you kind of have to either stop or just kind of go through that pain of walking with a pebble in your foot. I mean, and there were, t we were able to rinse our shoes out mm -hmm. and, the Keens were great for having the good sole. Like, I didn't right. slip on anything. They were And good. I didn't feel any rocks no, at all. No, they were great. Except but the ones that got in. they do, the little pebbles do get into your shoes. So that's where when they do recommend, you know, you have to have your toes and your heels covered, even for kids. Believe it or not, an, just a plain water shoe, mm -hmm. um, as, as cheap as they are, uh, they're, they're, I would recommend that because it is it is nice to... Uh, probably not have the pebble situation so just to know once you're done with that you get some time to kind of like dry off and then go back to the bus um well what we had like what was it maybe it was like a, a 19 person van i mean it wasn't something huge i i want to say our group was less j under 20 people yeah i like thought it was like 19 yeah somewhere in there so there's a guy, they come to your van and they're selling beer and water and, and things like that. And then your next trip well, is over to the Mystic Mountain, which is where you get your lunch, which is included in the Disney excursion and your, um, and the bop clip comes after. It also technically includes the sky ride. Well, the sky ride is great. It was very fun. Is really just a ski lift. Th the ski lift going up the mountain and then back down the mountain. The ski lift though, it's funny because it reminds me of like, it's not a. It's not like a gondola that you would ride in, you know, Utah or Colorado, any of those ski places. It's, it's like the Ohio fast, Peak and it's, Peak. It's kind of. It's. <laughs> it's more on the slow, casual side. So before you get on there to go up, make sure you reapply sun, or put on sunscreen. Because I know it was maybe a good fifteen to twenty minutes to get up there. Yeah. And you're just baking in the sun. Yep. But luckily, your wife is a sunscreen person that forces you all to wear sunscreen so we were yeah, good at the speed it was going that's not the most comfortable thing to be on probably in the middle of the summer but you know once you're up there you're 
We had the lunch neck. Well, we're kind of what, like filed off. Here's once we were kind of done and kind of look back. The way it went, they had like this buffet lunch. This it was jerk chicken. There's they had hot dogs. They had beans. So they had what they called the adult area it was jerk chicken, fried fish, rice and peas, coleslaw, and then water or punch to drink, which you could also buy. Like they had a red stripe and stuff. Then they had a quote kids area that was hot dogs and French fries, um, but of course kids could eat from the adult section, and adults could eat from the kids section, you know, kind of like that. The food was good. It was definitely like Jamaican jerk, you know, the rice and peas. It was there. It was great. We Isabel Scott and I all enjoyed those things. Um, we we didn't have hot dogs and fries. We had the other stuff. But um, Isabel, did you try the punch? Um. I don't think so, no. I don't re- recall. I think we all had water. Yes. Um, and it was good. It was, you could have went up a couple times if you wanted to, but they mm-hmm. gave you a good portion and yeah. it was filling. It was good. And I felt that it was authentic enough. And this is just another one of those places that it, your mix of cruise, port adventures, as well as day guests who were, you know, staying on the island. Um, there were also. I think it, there were at least two other cruise ships in, in top of the Oasis, but there were at least two cruise ship Nocho Rios that day. Yep. Which from the top of here, you can look down and see those cruise ship at the pier. And so you, it's not, so what happens is we ate and then we got in line for the bobsled. That and took a bit. That did take a while. It was not, it sometimes, Cruise port adventures kind of get like a fast lane or a reserved time to do something just because of the timing of everything. But this was a case where we had just a big window of time at the facility and you could pick and choose what you wanted to do. And so we got in line for the bobsled. What would you say? At least 30 minute wait? I'm not sure. Um, it was more than enough time. Cause it was enough time that they were selling drinks in the line. So, you know, uh, we don't do shots, but they had a Bob Marley shot, which was grenadine, um, Midori, and something else. Of course, I, I drank. I mean, I didn't take it like a shot, but I sipped it. But it was cool because it was the Bob Marley and, you know, it was cash. Um, so it was enough time to, they were selling those kind of things. Isabel had time to because... I found out there was a slide there was a water in slide a there. pool. And I would have done it. I just didn't want to get wet again. Yeah, that was the problem. I got wet and I didn't get dry. It looked great, though, because also included in this Mystic Mountain is this water slide, which looks amazing. Scott has pictures of it on the trip report. And then there's a pool at the end, and they've got like an infinity type pool. Like, it it really looked great. It kind of made me wish we had more time there because the views were great. You could see Ocho's Rios, the port, um, you know. It, it was it was awesome. So it was good for... Isabel wasn't the only kid in our group that went and rode the water slide. Except we needed towels because we left them on the bus. And so... It's okay, your I kids, you guys can adapt. And it was dripping. I was using the blow dryer in the bathroom to dry off my shoes. It was a whole thing. That's because you can adapt. But you had waterproof Keens on, Isabel, so... It's but it was worth it. Yeah. There was, there's also a restaurant and bar there too. So if you didn't want to eat what was outside, you could choose to, I mean, you've already paid for the, you know, lunch, but if you wanted to go in, you could sit down and get something to eat. Also a little hummingbird garden Mm -hmm. area. And yes, there were hummingbirds. The other part of this, it was like a educational center, which was more or less the back where the line had backed up for the bobsled kind of went into. I mean, there's a lot of, like, memorabilia and sign and, and information stuff and some suits from the bobsled team on display, as well as... Other sports. You know, information on just Jamaica in general. It was, you know, it's hev- there was a lot to do with the Olympics, you know, runners, because, you know, Usain Bolt's the other big... You know, you think a lot of time of just bobsled when you think of Jamaica, but the Usain Bolt's, like the other big name, you know, the biggest Olympic name down there. 
in Jamaica. So we finally get the bobsled. It's the, each little bobsled's a one person seat, but in our case, I went by myself, but Emily and Isabel, they like link two of the cars, two of the bobsleds together. Or because you have to drive it in a way. Yeah, it's this is one of this is another one of those you need to be careful with because it's not it. It's like one of the you ever see those YouTube videos or on the news where some guy builds a roller coaster in his backyard, like you know, an actual tubular roller coaster. It goes upside down and something bad inevitably happens. Well, this is sort of the equivalent on more of a safer way, safe scale, but you're literally in these bobsleds and you have these handbrakes that you have to push and pull to kind of break your cart. And they tell you, do not run into the person in front of you or behind you. This isn't Tomorrowland Speedway where you'll just nudge them. You'll do some damage if you hit Or the someone. go-karts at Fun Spot. And you... No, they tell you not to run. You anything. actually need to stop at the end of this track. Otherwise, you will be injured. There's no, like, mechanism to stop you. Like, you know, a traditional roller coaster. So, it's one of those that you need to also be level-headed at this point, too. But, yeah, this thing was so much fun. It we, was fun. I we was actually afraid to go full throttle because I same. felt like we were going to fall off. Yeah, it's one of those that you need to go a couple times to kind of feel it out and, you know, before you can start pushing it a bit. And yeah, it was a blast. But the the line being so long, I believe we could have gone on as many times as we wanted, right? If there were no lines. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We didn't, they didn't, they didn't mark us or anything or... You know, they didn't put a little check mark. We were given wristbands at Duns River Falls that, you know, said kind of our tour group, but that also worked, you know, carried over for this part of it as well. And they didn't mark it. So if there was no line or if we really wanted to and we still had the time, we could have gone again. Yep. So it was, I mean, it's a little cliche, you know, go to... Jamaica and do those bobsled thing, but it was really fun. Worth it. I would totally do that again. Mm -hmm. Would spend a lot more time at Mystic Mountain for sure. I love Duns River Falls, but like I said, I don't need to do that again for another couple of visits because mm -hmm. it's not going to change. But Mystic Mountain, there was more to do. Like I could hang out at the pool. I could go on the water slide. I would eat at the restaurant. I mean, the food we had was good. It was traditional Jamaican food, your chicken. They get worried, you know, because Isabel comes up to have the chicken they're like oh it's spicy and she kind of like chuckles like i'm from florida yeah i eat this stuff i don't want your hot dog it's fine and she's ate it and was, it was delightful but um yeah it was pretty it was authentic ish enough that it was good i felt we and it was long i mean we met at what time Seven fifteen. right we didn't get back to the port until three so just after three, three so, I mean, for $139, it included lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Worth. Yeah, no, it was good. And for either, sure. I mean, I brought up the hour drive. Other times I've been critical of these hour drives, but this... Well, the hour drive on the way back was great because you could kind of decompress. And normally people would fall asleep except for the person, the child talking on the bus the whole way. But the hour drive on the way back is actually kind of nice because... Yeah. You can kind of relax. But when we got back, we, Scott, you wanted to go take pictures, and Isabel and I were going to kind of just go into the shops and explore the port. And yeah, it was our, you know, being our first time there, we at least wanted to walk around the port facility, kind of get the lay of the land a little bit. That Margaritaville pool looked amazing. A lot of, and a lot of like places to sit and just kind of hang out in there. Yeah, it's nice. Even away it's from the pool. Nice. Their hot so, tub. And Oasis was there at that point. It wasn't mm -hmm. there in the morning, but... It, it was, was pulling in when we were leaving. Yeah. yeah. It, as we were walking around, going in shops, taking some photos, you could see the sky getting dark and moving in, and we just kind of decided to head, head back on board so we wouldn't get caught out in the rain. Yeah, 
we walked into like the duty free shops and all that good stuff and you know we met up with you a few times in between your photos but the port the port is very nice i mean it's it's definitely a port made by cruise ship and it's very nice and there's nothing even remotely unsafe and you can get your Jamaica wares, you know, they've had spirit jerseys. So. They had a craft market area. So yeah. They, they it's a, buy it's, like it's it. another one of those, the whole area is pretty much just cruise passengers from either ship. There's nobody coming in at, the, at this area. So it's. Yeah, so we got on board, we cleaned up, and then um, we went to Pirate Night, which, Scott, when's the last time we had the Pirate Night menu? I don't remember the last time going to Pirate Night. Right. We usually go to. Apollo or Remy. Or we've been to Cabanas. Yeah. Just whenever seating. So um we had a lovely night. Like it was a, it was a good cruise. The dining was good. The We actually opted for a seven thirty showing of Captain Marvel. Due to the runtime it just worked. After dinner we went there and because dinner was so the service was so great, we we're able to get out and Go to that showing and then just call it a night. You gotta get your snack from the Vista Cafe for the movie. <laughs> so in a lot of families, people, you know, roll up with their chicken fingers and fries from the pool deck. But in the Sanders family, <laughs> Isabel likes her Vista Cafe snack. Parmesan. Parmesan. Cheese, the crudite. Crackers. Yeah. Vegetables. Right. So because of being a nice mom... I filled up a plate from the Vista Cafe, and then I stopped and got got a whiskey from Bon Voyage. So everybody can enjoy Captain Marvel, you know. So then uh, the next day was the Sea Day, um, which since... Movie day. Yeah, since we spent... Our first Sea Day was um, fourth, uh, not 4th of July, St. Patrick's mm. Day. So we did a lot of inside stuff. This day we decided that we were going to do um, movies. That was going to be our pool day, kind of like it was in Cosimo. So, um, yeah, we... we spent Muppets, the Hercules, Moana. We didn't even get up to mini golf, did we? No, we were having too much fun at the pool day. Yeah. It was, it was just such a busy day of movies. And also snow cones. Oh, oh that, that was snow cone day. Right. I think it's because you started your day with espresso at the Cope Cafe that got you ready and going. Um, but, you know, just of note, we ate lunch on the pool deck and, um, you know, they're they're serving. They've always had vegetarian off- offerings. I'm not vegetarian or vegan, but um, I did go and get the vegan sausage. sausage. It was delicious. Um, they They have a lot of they're starting to kind of widen their offerings a little bit. So we had that. um, Then there were the snow cones that you guys had. But, you know, we get to a point where usually after lunchtime, we're we've because we've rope dropped the pool or as Scott was there before rope drop, because the the kind of I I don't want to say the vultures were out, but people were ready. People were ready. The first on. No, the on Sunday when we were walking back past the pool after breakfast we were there early i think early one day and there were seats already taken right well this is the morning if you recall scott that um we told you i don't know why you were a little bit later than us i just know i wanted that to we sit. said we need you to hold the seats we'll come yeah. back i just knew i wanted to sit and watch movies we wanted to sit and watch movies all day and i was going to camp out in the chair yeah, this was the day that even before the crew, the crew started to unstack chairs, guests were waiting to grab them. So um, you camped out. Actually, physically in the chair, not just with a towel or a book on it. Right. But because the thing is, is that unlike a lot of pool guests, Scott and I sit in our, we get the, there's these two specific chairs that we usually sit in. We actually sit in them. We don't put our towels there and then go in the pool. We sit in them. I'm reading a book. Scott's reading a book or blogging or doing something. You know, Isabel's usually at the pool, and then when it comes time for lunch, she sits next to us, or one of us gets up to eat. But we actually, our our butts are in the chairs, so we are not the the group that doesn't do that. Um, 
But usually about after lunchtime, we're ready to be to kind of clean up and be done. And Isabel wanted to go to do trivia. So surprise, surprise. So we went to Pixar trivia, which was packed. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. It was packed. So we did Pixar trivia and then we went into um, O'Gill's and all that good stuff. This Um, cruise was also, you know, March Madness Madness was going on. And for the life of me, a company that owns a sports broadcasting network doesn't understand that the sports bar needs to focus on, you know, needs to be attentive to games. They cut off, what was it? One of the games with like a second to go on the clock, like a close game. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you just have like this. They put on soccer, which nothing against soccer, but. But this is March Madness Madness. tournament. I mean, 90% of those in there were watching that game and you just hear the, you know, sudden groan. Like for somebody that owns a sports broadcasting network, they don't really have a trickle down effect on the ships when it comes to sports. Right. Like they just don't get people that want to sit and watch a game or right. a specific game. Like it's what we have because I just don't. Right. Then we, we went up to change because it was semi-formal night. We went to Enchanted Garden. And Scott, this is the night where you got that strawberry dish. Potentially one of the best menu, dining room desserts I've ever had. I don't even... It was... I, I mean, that... I don't know, Scott. Other than the almond souffle, that beats most of the stuff I've had at Palo, too. It's all... It's really It was an enchanted garden, which was serving the prince and princess dinner. This was a strawberry and cream tower. The thing was just delicious. I've never been one to order multiple desserts, but this is something I would break that rule and ask for another one. I can't believe that... I ordered something different, even when Cindy was extremely specific on what we should order. Our servers were spot on. So we went back and did a quick trivia. Surprise, surprise. 90s tune trivia. And if everyone remembers, who almost ran the table? That other team that won. (laughs) (laughs) The people, this was, we were having so much fun that people, the people around us thought we single-handedly won, but I was missing two artists in one song. And... I think the other people got them all. Isabel right? and I were no help. No, you guys were the worst. Except the one song I kind of left out. But, but this guy help. was like, oh yeah, you guys totally won it. Because I knew almost everything, but somebody beat us. I think, yeah, they, they beat us. I think us. they got them all. So. No, they missed one. Uh, um, then we saw Marcus Monroe, which, wow, was he funny. The, juggling is just... It's funny. These variety acts are great. Did we go to any Broadway style productions this cruise? No. Did we hit all of the variety acts in Captain Marvel? Yes. No, we didn't go to see Josh. We didn't. But, um, so yeah, another good day at sea. I'm glad that we kind of made Cozumel that third day at sea because the way that we kind of look at things is spring break is kind of our relaxation you know, the summertime is when we take our vacation that we're sightseeing and doing new things. And it's kind of where you need the vacation from the vacation to recover. But spring break is kind of our chill. So um, we had one day left, uh, which, you know, Castaway Key, the way the Disney Cruise Line likes to end its Bahamanian and Caribbean cruises. Um, and it was definitely way too cold to go in the water. I still went anyway. At least for us. I didn't go full way and like the ropes of course I wanna go. I didn't go to that. I stuck and played in the shallow water. We We had our chairs. We did put our put our chairs in the water and you know. But uh um yeah, yeah Sky, you didn't think we were gonna dock. It was very windy. I felt it was a lot more windy than last You know, the year before when the Magic had, you know, it took multiple attempts before we finally docked. We had to get our reusable bags. Yeah. We had to buy merchandise. Three reusable bags. This is what the Sanders do. We are merchandise buyers. So we just kind of hung out and chilled. Um, You know, if you look at our trip report, you know, I I do, I usually get the steering ray. I don't get the drink of the day typically um, because they're really kind of sugary and sweet. But I usually do get the stingray on Castaway Key. 
um, it was served to me in like the styrofoamish coffee cup with the straw, which was kind of funny. Um, and it was it was the paper straw, but it, you know, classy. It, it doesn't. It's feel, what you take. It doesn't feel very tropical. No, it's the cup you take your alcoholic beverage in to places you don't want somebody to know you're drinking alcoholic beverages. That's exactly right. So then before lunch, when I went to, you know, I, I went up to the bar and I was like, hey, do you guys have, you know, any wine? And they're like, oh, yeah, we do. And then they pour it into the like paper cup. The paper Coke cup. And I looked like, at the guy the and I was dish. like, oh, this is super classy. He actually felt bad for me. So he like increased the pour, which wasn't what I was looking for. It was just very comical. Look, I have drank drunk wine out of a paper cup before so it does not bother me no shame right but it's just funny it's just it's very funny you know they might as well just bust out the 1.5 liter bottle of you know 9.99 wine and it poured in at that point but it was just comical that was the first time we had encountered that usually it you know had come in, in the other cups i don't know what those cups are they're like punch cups or plastic and fluted but it was it was comical. So yeah, that no branding or anything. That's fine. So we had our lunch at Cookies, which was the typical lunch at Cookies. It's don't the, forget the dance party. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's it's always been. Um, we did do a little bit of the dance party, so that was kind of fun. Um, and then we were just kind of ready to to go back on the ship. I mean, sometimes Isabel goes to Scuttles afterwards, or sometimes. You know, we've done other things, but this time we were just kind of... Well, the water was off limits, so... Yeah, I didn't want to see... Like, it was a nice day. We Kind of the pool deck had the, you know, the draw. Yeah, and then Tangled was on, which mm -hmm. is... As Tangled is to the Sanders, as Frozen is to most other people. So, we, we enjoyed Tangled. Um, we were going to Remy... And Isabel decided that she was going to uh, have room service. And, and Scott and I went to Remy. And, and what a way to wrap up our, our cruise. I, I can't say this enough. I know people complain because they can't believe that you would spend this much money per person. But I will tell every person out there, in my opinion, it is well worth the price. We do bring our own bottle of champagne and pay the corkage fee um, because for Scott to get a glass and, and I to get one glass each, even if we just got wine, it's usually a better value for us to just bring our own bottle and pay the $25 corkage fee plus gratuity. Um, but, I mean, Scott just posted the review. and He can link to it in the show notes. I mean, Scott, are we not blown away every time we go there? It's something new, something. They're so good about just I've making the cruise. I've never been disappointed by anything I've been served. And, and I've eaten things I would never order anywhere else. Right. And right. I've enjoyed. And, you know. It's probably the only place I'll eat mushrooms. For, for those of you that read, what we do is we go in there and we, we tell our server, look. We don't want to pick off the Hunel and the Arno menu or whatever. I want to stay away from pork and red meat. Scott is allergic to shellfish. Make the menu. Bring whatever makes you feel comfortable. We will eat that. We have never been let down. Um, the maitre d' Benoit we've seen a few times now, so that was really cool. Um, Jer Jerome... Well, that's not how you say it in French. It's like Jerome. Um, we've had a couple times. Yeah, we know the Samaye because he Duncan. was in Duncan. We've seen him on a few cruises. It's just if I would have eaten Remy in any night before the last night, <laughs> the rest of the dinners I would have kind of looked at my plate like, oh, but Remy is a great way to cap off your cruise. Um, we've done brunch. We've done the dessert experience. We've done dinner. Dinner at Remy is my absolute favorite. Um, brunch at Palo is what I would pick between the two. Um, but it's great. So look at the reviews if you want to see the way that they serve the food, the way that they, you're not raw. I mean, it's just, it's a fantastic experience all the way around. You truly feel like you're, I don't want to say you're being pampered, but you are. But you, you definitely get what you pay for. It is a Victorian Albert's experience on a cruise ship 
but you almost feel like you're, I don't want to say more exclusive, but you're like quarantined off. It, it's just great. It's so, f- it's a few people. It's, it's definitely busier on the fantasy than it is the dream because, you know, with the three and four night cruises, people don't like to leave the main dining rooms. Um, but on the fantasy, people have more time to do that. But we pay for it. We don't get it for free. It's not, we're not hosted. No one's like making me say this. It's wow, on shape. It's very good. And, and I can't wait to go to Remy on our next cruise. And Remy is the number one thing I miss on the Magic and Wonder. Uh, Magic and Wonder are my favorite ships, but I, d- I definitely miss Remy. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't want to kind of get on my soapbox, but um, very, very, very nice way to cap off your cruise with that dinner and Remy. And this time, we didn't have any leftovers except for our, our suckers. Um, we, yeah, it was good. Scott, do you have anything to add? You summed it up. Isabel, you had a lovely room service. Yes, I did. <laughs> I kind of laughed. She had like this room service grilled cheese and Caesar salad. And, and here Scott and I are eating, you know, cauliflower canapes and lime zest and little tarts. And But I will say this was one of my favorite Remy experiences because Scott and I had that Anton ego moment where we put food in our mouth and it like literally transported us back to our childhood when they brought these little tarts and it reminded us of elderberry pies. We we just kind of looked at each other without saying anything and I was like, Scott, he's like, M, like this reminds us of elderberries. So I mean if any of you are from the north, you know, we're from Ohio, so that was something there. But yeah, great seven night cruise. Love the ports. Um just wanted an extra sea day. So we skipped Cozumel, but overall you know, excellent. If you have any questions, just tweet at Scott or leave it in the comments and, and we'll answer them for you. I think he's going to post a review of of uh, the actual Jamaica Port experience. He's already done Captain Marvin, so that's out there for you if you want to see it. But highly reputable and super economical. I mean, that was 40 bucks per person. And if you're 11 and under, the kids have a cheaper price. Isabel turned 12 on that day and had to pay <laughs> we had to pay 40 for her but still for for the three of us for 40 bucks a person i mean yeah you're you're not going to get a, a disney cruise on an excursion that's even I remotely say, i looked that. i meant i mentioned this in the port of entry review does disney do that exact tour i don't recall that specific tour and when you are asking me without Usually yeah, I have all I this research done. Yeah, but I threw you under the bus, I know. The other thing to consider is when you're looking at Stingray City, there's a difference between Stingray City snorkeling area and Stingray City sandbar. They're two similarly named, but if you're looking to go, you know, walk around and stand around on the sandbar with the Stingrays, focus on things that say Stingray City sandbar. Because there's... A, actually a different stingray city location where you just snorkel it's more i mean there are rays there but it's more of a snorkeling thing you're not standing up yeah i usually do have more kind of information when it comes to that because like i had it down for rome you know the port adventure that we did with can't be missed tours disney was offering for like 300 and some dollars a person and we did it for like 110 or something so lit- i mean it was literally the exact same tour but i don't i don't have have this one down awesome well thanks for listening to our uh kind of trip report podcast from our seven night western caribbean cruise on the disney fantasy hey before i let you all go i just want to take a moment to say we are just about ready to get sailing on the inaugural dcl blog group cruise sailing the Disney dream here on June 19th, 2019. If you'd like to join us on a future group cruise, we have our second group cruise scheduled for February 20th, 2020 on the Disney Magic from Miami. It's a four-night Bahamian cruise uh, with a stop in Nassau, Castaway Key, and a day at sea. If you're interested in joining us on that future cruise, please check out our travel partners at storybookdestinations.com. Have a question, comment, rumor, or just want to say hi? 
Call 321-765-3252 to leave a voicemail, and we just might include it in a future episode. You can reach us via the comments section on the website, email at contact at disneycruiselineblog.com, Twitter at the DCL blog, and Facebook at facebook.com slash Disney Cruise Line blog. 